All right, now say we both partners decide we're going to have a threesome. Right. How, how do you, right. what's the first step? What's the first step? You know, I find that most threesomes kind of happen um, quite organically. You'll usually find that you're with a group of friends or there's a couple that you know that it kind of moves into that space quite easily. Some people don't have that luxury, so what you do is you go online. Mm -hmm. And so there are loads of, you can go to swinger sites, you can go to dating sites, you can go to, um, to sex sites that are available for sex fetish sites. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can go and request a partner that you're looking for. You can say what you're looking for, you have to be very upfront with what it's for, um, very upfront about the, the, the play and the boundaries that you want to set in place. And you can do it, and you can do it anonymously, and you can vet who comes in and who you want to meet. And that's the other thing, you've got to meet. Obviously you've got to yeah, meet. Yeah, you have to meet. You have to meet, and you have to meet with your partner, and both of you have to be in on it. You both have to go into it as a team, because you're going to do this as a team. Mm -hmm. And I always say, like, I don't know about the third person in it, but if you're a partner, if you're a couple and you're getting a third in, that third then becomes an addition to your sex life. They're not going to pull you apart. They're not going to, you and your partner are the priority. And so each other's opinion is the priority. Your husband or your boyfriend or you, you don't go and find a person by yourself. You do it together. Mm -hmm. You choose a person together. You meet them together. You have a conversation about them together. And then when you've met them and you like them and you've had coffee and you've decided what you want, you can then start planning how the play is going to work out. And that's assuming you don't do it with friends. And I would also be a little bit like, eh, with how the friend you, thing. How do you bridge the topic when, if you want to do it with a friend? Um, Listen, in, in my experience, it usually just ends up happening. Okay. You know, I think that there are a lot of situations, I don't know many cases where I would sit down with any of my friends and be like, so we were thinking uh, <laughs> about that. Um, you know, it's a conversation that I might have with my boyfriend, but to actually just sit mm -hmm. down, it's, it kind of, it puts an awkward bent on the, on the friendship if that spark isn't already there. I yeah. think we all have like those couple friends or those other friends that might, we know might play. Mm -hmm. In which case, then you will instinctively know like how to broach the topic and try not to do it when you're drunk. I, like it always happens, people get too drunk, they do stupid things, they haven't discussed mm -hmm. it and I think that gets like a little bit messy. So if you're going to do it, at least give each other some lead up to it. You've had the conversation. Don't go to a party, get like wasted and be like, so honey, about that threesome, I got Jack in the Back. you know <laughs> can you imagine and your husband's like what <laughs> so yeah so don't do that rather have the conversation first and then you can both start looking and finding out and if there's a friend you can maybe pull that into a conversation when it is appropriate mm -hmm. and when you feel that the person might be interested okay so that's getting started right. now for for the action you, you would obviously set boundaries beforehand right and then and then have the, the threesome. Right. Now what happens afterwards? Well, well let's just go back to the boundaries thing okay. because there's also the, the during the play. You know, just because something is on doesn't mean it have, has to be on all the time okay. if you're not comfortable. So let's say you go into the play and the play is somebody's going to come over for dinner, you're going to have some wine, and you have set the boundary with your partner that there is, say for example, there's only going to be oral sex or kissing or heavy petting, no penetration, always eye contact, you don't want them to kiss, whatever. You and your partner decide, what you want to happen, what's going to feel comfortable for you, what's not going to feel comfortable, and you go into the play with that. Bearing in mind that anything can change, as long as you and your partner are in touch the whole time. So if at any point you feel comfortable, you know that you can say, I don't feel comfortable with this anymore, because you don't know how you're going to feel until you're there. Yeah. You know, your, your partner could be like, oh yeah, I've always wanted to see goal and goal action, it's going to be amazing, or I want to see like my wife, a huge thing is like my wife having sex with another man. And then they see it happen and suddenly the fantasy is a reality and it's not so good and they're bad feelings and then people feel like they have to carry on with the play and they don't have to carry on with the play. If you don't like what's happening, you stop it. Why? Because you and your partner are a team mm -hmm. and that's what you agreed on going into it. That when there is a time that you don't want to carry on, it stops. And if you want it to move further, that you and your, your guy, your partner, your girlfriend, whatever, have a way of communicating that you're happy for it to go a little bit further. And always save sex and always get checked beforehand. Okay, good. So that's during. Yeah. Now we're into the after. Right. How do we deal with after You know, feelings? if you have gotten someone, so if you've gotten someone off the internet, be sure that you are very clear what is going to happen after. So not just where it's going to happen. Is it going to happen in your house? Is it going to happen in a hotel? Is it going to happen? Always control the space. I feel like don't go to their house or something. You control the space. What's going to happen afterwards? Do they get to have a shower? Do they stay? Do they have coffee? Do you have a glass of wine afterwards? Once you've negotiated the exit strategy, 
then you and your partner need to talk. You need to talk about what happened. You need to talk about like, did you like this? Didn't you like that? Assuming you went through with the whole play. Do you want to try it again? Did you like the person? Didn't you like the person? Go through everything. It's kind of like a form of aftercare. You know, you just yeah. touch base. You continually touch base. If you want it to be a good experience that's going to build your relationship and make it stronger, you need to touch base all the way through. Now, this last question is, a, it's not totally off topic, but what if you're the third person and you start to get feelings? Oh, feelings. Well, we jumped, jumped to feelings. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, as a third, as a third, I think you need to go in with a very clear understanding that you are a third and that you are there for your own experience. So your experience is to be with a couple or to be with a woman or to be with a man, whatever the case is, that you have something that you want to get out of that experience. And so when you have the discussion with the couple about what you want to do or you, you're part of a couple and you, you've met another couple and now it's a foursome, um, <laughs> boy, um, now it's a party, um, that you are clear in that first discussion, like what your expectations are, you know, what do you want? So the couple can be like, we don't want this, we don't want that, we don't want the next thing. Well, is, is that your experience? Is that what you want? Is there something, do you want to be more with the woman? Do you want to be more with the man? Um, so be clear about what it is you want to get out of it. And then also be clear that you are comfortable with both partners, that you have the consent of both partners. I find usually there's one partner who's kind of pushing for a threesome and the other one kind of just goes along with it. And in my experience, the third always feels like there is a point at which they need to touch base with usually the woman, usually it's a woman being the third, to touch base, go for coffee with her, find out, are you happy with this? Are you comfortable with this? Have coffee with both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just, you know, really trust your, trust your gut. And if you are a third going into a house of someone that you're not certain of, just, you know, touch, touch base with your friends, let them know where you're going, be sure that you feel safe, and if at any point you do not feel safe, you get out. Um, and I think that's also the point of meeting someone beforehand. You don't go to a stranger's house off the bat. No. You meet them for coffee in a public place, see how you feel about it, let someone know where you're going to be and if you haven't checked in that they need to get a little bit like worried. But assuming you're not going to be an idiot and put yourself in those in those situations, which is why it's better to get to know someone, better to get to know a couple. And as for the feelings, listen, I mean, that's got to come like, if you're getting feelings after the first time, there's a little something, beep, beep. So, <laughs> so I would say like, if you're getting feelings as a third with a couple, you need to understand what, what your expectations were in the beginning and how different that is to now. And then I would say get the hell out of Dodge because that's, that's never, it never ends well. Unless you want to go and be part of a thruple, in which case... A thruple. A thruple. <laughs> in which case they would depend on the couple if they want to be a thruple.